how to create charts in Excel within the cell, within the table. Here I have two different examples. The first one is where I created here a bar chart within the cell. And the second example is where I created a chart using icons, using emojis, using symbols. I think in many different situations, it's better to use this approach than to use a standard version of a chart in Excel like this one right here. Because as you can see, the names are too large to the area of the chart. So I don't think it's look properly correct. And uh, in this case, in this scenario, a uh, bar chart within the cell and also icons that I'm using as the chart itself. So let's find out how can we create this in Excel using two different tools. The first one, the conditional formatting. And the second one is to use a function called Reptile to help us to create this chart using icons, emojis. We can start first with the first example where I have basically here a data set with the items that I have in stock. But you can use any different table, any different data set, okay? I have here informations such as product, shelf location, and also the quantity for each one of the items that I have in the stock. So let's say, instead of create a chart for all those items, because as I can see here, the chart's not gonna look that good because the names are too large for the chart itself. I think it's better to create the chart within those cells. And the cells that I'm gonna use here are the cells that I have within the quantity column. So let me select here everything that I have as the values for the quantity. And then I'm gonna click here, Home tab, and here to the right, I have conditional for many. I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna choose, let's say, data bars. And here I have a lot of different options to choose to create these little charts within the cells. Of course, you have, let's say, icon sets that you can also select different types to display the data. But uh, here I want to stick with data bars and uh, let's say I want to choose the yellow one. Something that I can do here, of course, is change the color that I'm using. I can also change the outline color. But first, let's change here the numbers. So let's say the numbers are exactly in the middle of the cell. I want to put the numbers to the left. So I can click here in alignment, align to the left, like this. And I can also put everything in bold to make it easier to see. Like this, the numbers now are thicker and it's already working. So let's say I take here any number such as 227, but I'm going to change to 10. Enter. And as you guys can see, the bar automatically updates for me whenever I change the value. And if I change it to a larger number such as 999 and then I press enter, as you guys can see, the bar now automatically updates for me, filling completely the cell because now the value that I have here is the largest one. And uh, all those other bars are a bit smaller because the comparison with the largest one. But let's say you want to change the colors of those bars. You can click in any number within the quantity column. And then you can go back to Home tab, Conditional Formatting. But this time, you're going to click here, Manage Rules. Because we already have here the rule that we created before that is about the data bar. And then to access here the data bar, you can double click or you can click Edit Rule. I'm going to double click here once you because I think it's easier. And as you can see here, there's a lot of different options to change the layout and the format. But mainly, we can just stick here with the bar appearance. Instead of using fill as gradient fill, I can change here to solid fill. The whole bar is going to be painted with the same color. And if I choose gradient fill, I'm going to have one part with a stronger color and another one with a lighter one. And if you, you can also change here different colors. And as the border, you can also change. You can read it off the border selecting no border, or you can stick with a border, solid border, and you can also change here the colors, such as, let's say, black. And as you can see here, now the corners, the border, the outline of the bar is painted with this black color. But I'm going to stay with the yellow one, and I can also cancel here because I will not change anything. So this is how we can create this first option of charts within the cells. The second option we can use here, the equal sign wrapped function. That means to repeat something. And as I have here a situation with the months, January, February, March, April, and on and on, and also the rate of each one of the months, I want to give here a status. So let's say in January, I have two as the rate. So I want to have here two stars. And if I have five in the February, I want to have five stars and on and on. Okay. So this is the logic that I want to build here. And in order to do it, we need to use the equal sign REPT function, wrapped function, repeat. I'm going to double click here in this function one, two, to select as this, the text that I want to repeat in this first argument here, I can use basically anything, but it's very important to use the thing that you want to use within in between quotations marks. So 
open quotation, and then let's say X, close quotations. And then comma, what is the number of times that I want to repeat this text? Five times, one, just once, or two times, three times, you name it. But I, instead of manually input the number of times that I want to repeat something, I can select here the cell that I have to the left because now I can dynamically make it works for all those rows that I have here. And uh, I can close parentheses and then press enter. And as you guys can see, now I have two axes. But if I click here in the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down, I'm going to have different numbers of appearances for each one of the rows. The five, I'm going to have five axes and uh, oh no, no. But instead of using an X, I want to use something more different, something different, let's say. I can take here the X and I can use a symbol or an icon. And there is a trick here in Excel. If you press Windows period, you're going to have access here for a lot of different emojis. And you can choose the one that you like the most. But uh, let's say I want to select here this little star. And then I can press escape. And then I can go back here to the function. And I can press enter. Now I have stars instead of have a, a X, for example. I think it's much better. But instead of using the icons that uh, Microsoft gives to you, you can also use Google to search the icon that you like the most, that you want to use. And then you can search on Google for the icon that you want to use, copy and paste here within the function, like you're going to do here now. This little star right here, I just use Google to search for this icon, and then I copy and paste here in Excel, and now I'm going to do it again. Copy this icon, and then here in, within the function, once you to open the cell, Instead of using this star, I'm going to control V to use the one that I have here. So I'm going to press enter and I think it's much better. And yeah, I'm done. You can also change the color of the icons, such as choosing here a yellow one or an orange one. I think it's look good. And uh, that's it. So this is how we can create different type of charts in Excel within the cell itself, within the table. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, because every day has a new video. So I see you there.